What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the BTW podcast, Beers, Toys, and Wrestling. Of course, I am Nate Gleason, joined by my usual cohorts, Lance Johnson. Hello. Dustin Hayward. Yo. And once again, we have a special guest with us today, Mr. Pete Kessel. Good evening, everybody. All right. Um, so, Pete, why don't you just give yourself a little introduction here? Oh, my name's Pete Kessel. I live in uh, Connecticut, a uh, whopping 45 years old. Um, been collecting off and on since I was a kid. Um, I have a uh, family, two children, been married for about 14 years. Uh, main collection is Transformers, I would say. Um, I also collect uh, a lot of Chugokin and some Spawn stuff. Mm. All right, man. Um, we are we're super we're super happy to have you on here. Um, so, uh, how's everybody's week been? Uh, Lance, why don't you lead us off? Sure. Uh, it's been all right. Uh, nothing obviously eventful was ha- happened. Uh, we actually got to get out a couple of days in a row. Um, we got out Friday and we got out Saturday. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, nothing exciting. Oh, Noah did go to his mom's house, which he hasn't done in, uh, almost a month now. So that was nice for him. He was all excited. Um, she wanted to keep him for the full week. Um, but didn't have a computer, an extra computer he could use for school. And he, uh, he was not a fan of that idea. He was like, no, I don't want to stay a full week down there. Um, so that validates me as a parent for <laughs> at least, you know, the next couple of weeks to like, you know, butt heads with him or piss him off or something. And that never happens. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah but otherwise, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty low key. Good, good to hear. Uh, Dustin, how about yourself? It's been all right. Same same old shit, really. You know, working a little bit, trying to keep the restaurant going. Yeah. Um, Pete, how have you been doing throughout uh, this whole quarantine fiasco? Hey, everybody's hanging in pretty, pretty well here. I uh, take the kids out hiking a few times a week to get them outside, get them some exercise and fresh air. While he's uh, working from home, which is good. Uh, kids are doing the homeschool thing, which has been going pretty well so far. Nice. Yeah, and I did see, uh, I, I saw a bunch of your pictures of those hiking locations that you have nearby you, and I'm I'm kind of jealous. We, we <laughs> really don't have anything good like that uh, down here. Oh, there's a, there's a ton around here. Pretty much every town, including our own, has at least two or three. Wow. That's awesome. That is, that is indeed awesome. Um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing big happening here on my end, of course. Um, I'll tell you what has been great to just get mind off stuff is uh, my friends have started a Dungeons & Dragons campaign that we're playing through... Uh, the app of uh, Roll20. I don't know if anyone is uh, familiar with that. Um, but it's just, you know, we, we do it once a week, and it's just a fun time to kind of... Y- you feel like you're socializing, at least. Um, lots, of, lo- lots of video games, too. Yep. All right. Um, so... I guess we'll move on to the uh, the first uh, portion here of the uh, the podcast, uh, the beer section. Uh, let's start by going around. What's everybody drinking tonight? Lance. Well, I am drinking. Uh, I actually, uh, I'm drinking uh, pretty much water with vodka and uh, mio. Uh, off a suggestion my wife gave me because uh, it was one of the things that she did back in college. <laughs> and uh, I got to say, it tastes like Diamond Tap, and I am regretting it. <laughs> so you're hydrating and dehydrating yourself all at the same time. Exactly. It's it's the perfect combination. Just keep that every, hydration level at, like, minimal. Like, yep. it's Breaking not changing. Either. Yeah. It's... Mm. it's 
I'm really regretting it. <laughs> oh, we call oh, that man. spoiling vodka. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, I'm I'm sorry you have to suffer through that. Um, hey, Justin, how about yourself? What uh, what, what you taking down tonight? Well, I got my my usual uh, usual younglings, mm-hmm. but I also have this strawberry passion fruit Slurpee from Seven Eleven <laughs> that I think I'm gonna put some Malibu in. There you go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so Pete, uh, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I'm continuing the trend from last night with uh, the Blue Moon Iced Coffee Blonde. Oh, I need Highly to recommend it. Need to get me some of that. That sounds yes, you do. <laughs> sounds so good. Uh, uh, tonight I am taking down uh, a new brew from my favorite brewery uh, here in uh, New Hampshire, Pipe Dream. It is called Juice Maze. Um, uh, their description here is uh, wild sour ale is exploding with fruit flavors aged on 900 pounds of blackberries and raspberries. Um, so, as always, give you a nice little sound bite here. Um, yeah, this stuff, I've, I've had it before. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, so, Pete. I wanted to get in it with you a little bit um, because you and I are massive, massive beer fans. Yes. Um, So why don't you uh, give us the rundown stuff that you look for, that you are into. um, And uh, and also uh, after that, give us some of the breweries around you that you like to hit up. Well, aside from uh, the Blue Moon Ice Coffee, which is now one of my favorites, newly, um, they also make a mango version of it, which is fantastic. Um, always been more steered towards more towards like the microbreweries and everything, which of course have become hugely popular over the past 10, 15 years or so. Mm-hmm. Um, big Sam Adams fan. I'll try anything they throw out there. Um, as far as uh, the breweries go, there's actually a really good brewery, uh, probably about a mile and a half from my house called Cold Creek, which is fantastic. They opened up about two and a half years ago, and uh, they actually opened up a bar recently, too, so you can actually go there and eat. And uh, been there with the wife a couple times. They make some really good food along with, uh, along with all the different brews that they have. They have a dessert brew there that is just to die for. It's perfect. <laughs> Did you tell me about that one before? I think um, I have, yes. Yeah, was, it, uh, was that one of the chocolate stouts? No, no, this is more of a berry kind of deal. I can't remember the actual name of it. Okay, all right. But it's the one. I think it's the one and only dessert beer that they actually make at Cold Creek. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, each year uh, we should uh, we should mention your trip up to Maine and the uh, the beer that you love to get up there. Uh, there's always something new. A couple of coffee brews that I've tried in the past that have been fantastic. Um, I need to. I, I definitely need to try to find a way to get myself some of that uh, brownie chocolate milk stout that you mm-hmm. have uh, told me about multiple times. Yeah, that that's been up there the past couple of years. We've gone. They've actually had that available up there. So I gotta imagine it's still kicking. So have you uh, have you gone out during this whole uh, quarantine thing? Have you at least done some takeout? Some not not to take up a curbside or whatever from uh, from your local breweries. Uh, not from the breweries. No, we've hit a couple pizza places here and there, but uh, that's pretty much it as far as takeout goes. A lot of home cooking going on. Yeah, that's that's good. Um, all right. Um, so I guess we will uh, move on over to uh, to toys here. Um, so. Uh, Let's start off with the usual rigmarole. Uh, what did what did any everybody get this week? Uh, Lance, go ahead, lead us off. Sure. I actually uh, I picked up four things this week, actually, surprisingly. All right. So uh, I happened to be out at Walmart, and uh, they had the Wave One of Earthrise, and of course it's Walmart, so it's like eight. 84 or whatever it was. So I decided at that price point I was picking up Cliff Jumper. 
Um, so I picked up Cliff Jumper, and I absolutely love him. He's awesome. He's fantastic. Uh, is going to replace the GDO Cliff Jumper on my shelf? I don't know. Um, but we'll see. We got time to decide on that. Then I also got um, a second blowpipe and like a third fire drive because I decided I wanted to repaint them into the um, into that I think it's tip top and heater the uh, target masters for quake uh, because quake right now is the only target master figure that I don't have target masters for um, hmm. so I'm gonna end up doing that at some point this week and then the last thing that I got was uh, Turtler. He came in to Hasbro Pulse. I was able to order it this week. Um, they also got another shipment of Scalors. Um, and now I'm just waiting to see when the rest of the guys come in to go and, and order the rest of Piranacon slash King Poseidon. So you're, uh, you're, you're in for all of that combiner, huh? Yep. All six bots. I, 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 the way I look at it is this way, right? The last full-size combiner I need is Piranacon. Currently, there I have two options. Option, and I think we talked about this last week, right? Option A is the Takara one through Pulse. Option B is the TFC Poseidon one. Um, that's still six hundred and something bucks. So I decided to go with the cheaper of the two options uh, because as ridiculous as it is, fish cannons are awesome. I'm I'm all in for fish cannons. <laughs> yeah, no, hey, hey, that's that's all fine, well and good. I just I don't know, I still maintain that it's it's still a little pricier from what you're for what you are getting. Um but uh, again, that's just my opinion. So here's, here's I guess, where the counterpoint would be because we know the Takara Tomi stuff runs a little bit more. Historically, if we go back to, say, let's, let's jump back to Unite Warriors because that's the next comparable thing, right? Yeah. Combiner Wars in the U.S., if I want a Combiner Wars U.S. figure, it was 16 bucks, 16 to 18 bucks, depending on where you got it. Um, maybe even as high as 20 if you went to Toys R Us, who still existed at the time. Um, if you ordered the Unite War Warriors version of the same figure, you were looking anywhere from 35 to 40 bucks. So to me, it's still at the same price point that it was back then. While the Hasbro price has increased, the Takara price is the same. On top of that, I don't have to pay to ship this one from Japan or China or Hong Kong or wherever to the U.S. because I'm a Pulse Premium member, so I get the shipping for free. So at the end of the day it comes out cheaper than even, you know, buying a comparable figure out of the Unite Warriors line. And I'm getting something that, yes, it does have extra weapons. It does have extra things to help justify the price point, right? All of the little sword pieces come and then they combine. He's got multiple guns. They've got multiple things that you can do with them. So to me, I think that it justifies that slightly higher price point for what you get. Plus, on top of it, it is technically an exclusive um, custom painted figure, right? Um, and, and you know what? Something out of the select line kind of thing. Yeah. So. And hey, so, if, if you think it's worth it, that's all that matters. Yeah. At the end of the day, I get him, and then really the only combiner that I need to get out of US G1 after that is a Monstructor, and I don't really have an attachment to Monstructor, so I am okay not getting him. And then I get Scorpionock, and I'm at that point, I'm pretty much done. 
like there's nothing else that I need to get. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was actually, because we were talking about this in the group text last night. But yeah, I was just looking up the, the fans project, Monstructor. Um, and I know, like, I mean, depending on how much you want a, rep- a representation of him, um, he's still, like, 270 at Robo Toy Base. Right. Um, so the answer for me is not that much. Not that much. All right. All right. Fair enough. Dustin, how about you? Um, I got uh, the MMC onslaught, and and immediately after playing with it for a day, ordered the two limb bots that are available because <laughs> right. it was it's awesome like if it was the size of zeta it would be amazing but uh i think itself it's going to be better for posing for pictures like the the bruticus like torso has an ab crunch that's like just crazy good um the all-in-one engineering is super fun like i can flip that thing from truck mode to bot mode to torso mode for bruticus in about 10 minutes that's that that's good to hear and it just flows man it's like like water yeah no i mean i've i've explained here more than once one of the reasons why i got out of the mp game is i don't want to spend a ton of time transforming stuff and um and to do that all in one shot um in a short amount of time is uh just great um, right. Any uh, a- anything else? No, no, that's been it, man. Other than I think I'll have uh, Swindle and Vortex tomorrow. Excellent. Uh, Pete, how about yourself? What uh, what what have you gotten this week? Uh, I was actually able to finally work out a trade and get my Mortal Kombat spawn from McFarland. So that's yeah. a good one. One I've been dying to get. Yeah, pretty much met every expectation I was thinking it would have. So that worked yeah. out really well. Posability is fantastic. The build quality is, you know, it doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hands like a lot of the older McFarland stuff does. Yeah. So they just they nailed that one right out of the park. And then I also ended up getting uh, the fans toys Sheridan, their war path. few issues Excellent. with the knees on that one, as many people have heard so far. Um, luckily for mine, no breakage. Um, I was able to just adjust a screw on one of the knees, and uh, that loosened it up enough to where it's fully posable. Transformed it a bunch of times, and no breakage. Excellent. Uh, yeah, I was uh, I, I was watching Pake's video that he just posted on all the fixes and such. Um, yep. yep. Especially with one of the replacement screws, they were. Uh, uh, I guess Fans Choice was sending out. Is it just me, or is this kind of a first for Fans Toys that they've shipped out a uh, a product where they actually came out and said there are known issues? Yeah, it's the first one that I recall. I can't think of any other figures they've had in the past where that's been an issue, not to this extent. Which I just found completely surprising because, you know, they have... Uh, we, we were actually talking about this uh, with Matt last week. You know, they they have a rabid fan base, and it's it's well, it's fun to kind of pick on that fan base. They really do put out good products. Yeah, their main issue is engineering. The quality of the parts and everything is always good. The look is always good. You know, aesthetic and so forth. It's really just. They have a few posability issues here and there, and then a lot of it's just the engineering can be either really good or it can be atrocious. There doesn't seem to be much in between anymore with them. Yeah. Um, yep. I would. I would agree with that. I've <coughs> only had. Uh, I've only been able to handle one of their products before, but um, just judging by what I've seen in reviews and such, that seems like. And as 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 far as as far as the spawn goes, no, because uh, uh, a couple of weeks back we were talking about the Doom figure that just came out from McFarlane and how there were some 
sculpting issues, especially with the head on that being so hollow, you know, the helmet yeah. uh, giving away this extended ball joint. Do you find any issues like that where if you, you know, if you pose one way, you break the sculpt to a unreasonable degree? No, they seem to have kind of panned back a little bit on that and didn't go overboard with the posability. I think pretty much everything you need is there without it going over an extent of breaking the sculpt in it. The knees are a little weird if you if you do the double bend a little too high, but outside of that, it's pretty pretty spot on. Good, 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 good. Uh, as for myself, I, uh, I picked up one of the uh, Siege Netflix figures from Walmart this week. That's one of our weekly stops when we go out. Um, I'm Those probably gonna, are yeah, I'm probably going to take them back. Um, I, I haven't decided yet. I just, they look cool ish. I just picked up Mirage um, just because I was hoping that maybe a, a Mirage was my least favorite uh, figure from from Siege so far. So I was hoping maybe just a different coloration would help change my mind. Um, and it didn't really. Um, not why I'm surprised that it didn't. Um, but, you know, sometimes that sort of thing has, has an effect on how you look at a, uh, a, a figure. Um, a great example of that is uh, the... Power of the Primes, Rodimus Prime versus Power of the Primes, Rodimus Unicronus. Right? Because the Rodimus Prime was largely hailed as trash, but the Unicronus figure is much more beloved than most of that. All of that is from a color scheme because it's the exact same figure um, other than the head sculpt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it's preconceived notion, too. You know, we have this idea of what, you know, Hot Rod and so forth looks like in our minds and everything. And when you repaint it into a totally different character who we're not as familiar with, I think it can make a big difference, too. And you can't go yeah. wrong with black. Black figure always looks cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, as for myself, um, uh, I, uh, as, as well, I also uh, was able to nab a fans project, Assaulter, this week. Um, so uh, I got him for a good deal. Found it. It's it's funny. Um, I'm I'm staying almost kind of cautiously optimistic on on this one because it is you know how you can save sales posts on Facebook and things like that. Um, I, I did this for an assaulter post maybe uh, six months. No more like four months ago um and uh and i just finally went and asked the guy if it's still available it was got it shipped out gave me a picture of the receipt so we'll see we we shall see but um but i'm 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 cautiously optimistic here um lance was kind of, we lance and i talked last night and uh he said that if he can find it it's gonna hook me up with the box and a little sprue of mini vehicles. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm a fans project whore, and I just love to have the whole package with whenever I go in one of their figures. I'm gonna leave that sentence alone because that was really inappropriate, Nate. I feel dirty for hearing it. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, so, uh, so Pete, let's get into, uh, let's, let's get into your, uh, uh, collecting habits a little more because, uh, you kind of go after uh, more towards what Dustin goes after, but I would say even to a, a, a larger extent, cause you have a much wider knowledge base of things like those Soul Shigoka and all the Japanese robots. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and, and break down uh, your collection a little more in a more detailed sense. What, what, what you like, don't like, the floor is yours. I'm a big die cast fan, man. Anything with metal in it is great, <laughs> just for the feel and everything of it. 
Um, articulation is, is a huge part of whether I uh, end up caring for a figure or not. Um, but it really comes down to the character also. I want to know about the character. Um, I don't buy something just because it kind of looks cool. You know, a lot of it's the nostalgia thing for me is a big part of it. Uh, Spawn was like, a, is probably what really got me into collecting as an adult. Back in like the early, mid-90s, I, I've had pretty much every series of his from series one through about series 13. And is, is that back when they were still more just statues? Than yeah, they were pretty much all statues at that point still. But uh, then I started doing uh, Transformers again. Uh, I don't know. I would say probably about 10 years ago or so. And then once the Facebook group started taking off, of course, it came became an even bigger deal and started spending more time towards that. Um, but that's definitely the whole nostalgia thing. If I watch any of the animation or any of that stuff nowadays, it's a joke. But I remember it fondly from my childhood. Excellent. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's let's jump into uh, some news stuff here. Um, Dustin, why don't you lead us off with uh, some more information about that Spawn Kickstarter? Yeah, so I uh, I have now upgraded my pledge. I went I went past the, just getting the classic spawn, and uh, they introduced like eight new tiers of figures you can get. So I opted for the classic and the modern with the autograph, just to support this project even more because it's uh, man they're adding. I think we just hit two million dollars out of the hundred thousand that it needed to work. <laughs> and uh he added uh metal chains on the cape now so it's metal chains on the cape and on the waist oh. another new set of hands um and uh necro energy effects that's that's awesome yeah. <laughs> nice so it's like yeah three sets of hands with each figure two head sculpts with each figure multiple weapons now energy effects, metal chains. Uh, and, and after watching the articulation video, I'm like, man, this is going to be an epic, epic figure. So is that enough to make you uh, pull, uh, pull the trigger on it, uh, Pete, or uh, still too much for you? I have a feeling it's going to end up happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's got 11 days to go, man. Don't, yeah. don't wait. Long. I, I still got time. I still got time to wait until he starts throwing bars of gold at it. Dude, I, well, funny, funnily enough, <laughs> the uh, the trilogy pack, the, the big three pack, uh, there is the, uh, one of the autographs is going to be on a gold plate. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know so the one? <laughs> <laughs> so, has there been any any more information on what the cape is going to be like? Is it just going to be like plastic that folds, or? Is it what, like with hinge points on it? Because I as, didn't catch this video. Um, as far as I know, on the cape, it's just one big piece. Okay. It doesn't appear. He initially to said there's going to be two hinges on the original hand. Right. In the, original, but, the first video that he released. Maybe they've changed it since then. I hope not. I think there might still be on the final release one, but from what they showed in the articulation one, he just popped like the prototype cape on it and it didn't have any articulation but there has been people in the in the chat on kickstarter asking him about articulated capes like oh, an, an extra cape that is articulated versus a static one so he's pretty much saying it's not out of the realm of possibility at this point yeah and uh, you know as i mentioned last week um in the previous video he did he talked about how varying textures on on figures really add to making it look more like an art piece than just a toy. So I'm still I'm still kind of hoping that maybe he comes uh, comes through with this, you know, with an articulated uh, or a wired cloth cape. I mean, that, uh, would, so, that, that would be ideal for yeah. that figure, especially if the articulation is good as he's making it out to be right now. Because uh, my only issue with a cape that's static is you can put all the articulation you want into the figure itself, but if the cape is in the way and you can't move the cape, yeah. you're not going to be able to get too many poses out of the figure itself. No, exactly. you, the, cape, the cape is going to be removable. 
So well, you're, you're uh, to take it that, off. And that's all good and well, but you know, if you want to get certain poses with the cape on and you can't, then what good? True. Good is it? True. But that's ultimately why I opted for the the uh, um, modern spawn with the classic spawn. So I can just play one with the cape and one without the cape. One like more commando, one more classic. -ish, yeah, because I, I was gonna say the the modern spawn uh, doesn't really have a cape, right? He he doesn't. He never used a cape on that incarnation, right? No, he did. He did. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <clears throat> the cape can appear and disappear. Fair enough. Um, how about that Al Simmons head? Is is that still only for the uh, the three pack, or has he added that to any? No, any that's. I think that's still for the three pack. Um, the classic I know is going to come with the masked head, and the screaming head, and then the modern comes with the shoelace head. But I have to double check and see if it comes with the second head yet or not. All right. Um, I'm just look. I'm just getting a uh, look here to see if there's other things to mention. Um, every week you guys talk about that spawn, and every week it gets me like one step closer to going and getting it because of all the stuff that's getting added there. Same um, here. Figures gonna be talked about for a long time. I well, yeah, it definitely is. I had the original toy that it was based off of back in the day, and man, every every week I'm just like, oh, I'm not that big of a Spawn fan. Like, I don't need it, but every week he, there's something more being added on, and I just got a side eye glance from my wife, uh, <laughs> and we all know how that goes. Um, right. But I have an out because I'll just turn to her and be like, mm, "When's the next shipment of Briar horses coming in?" Uh, right. She likes Briars, so that that's my out. Um, but yeah, I, every week I think, well, we'll see where it is. We'll see where it is next week, and uh, I may go in at the last minute and order one. We'll see. Go yeah, I'm de I definitely am. I'm tempted, and I want to wait until like the last minute to see how Look, far it goes you, um, if you guys are talking about waiting for the last minute to get it right but the the sooner you make up your mind the more likely it'll be more extras added right i understand that i just don't know that i want to because you know i've got a i generally only Sorry, my cat decided, or my dog decided, that she was <laughs> finally going to bark at the cat who had been sitting there for like 15 minutes. Okay. Um, so I lost track of what I was saying. Never mind, moot point. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. I mean, basically, uh, it was just I'm, I'm, I'm trying to decide how far I want to go into that or not. Um, okay, uh, we are making record time on this podcast right here, let me tell you. Um, uh, so I guess if anybody doesn't have anything else to add, um, can move into the, uh, the, the wrestling portion. Um, oh, yeah. All right, Lance. Uh, why don't you kick us off here? All right. So, um, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, pretty much very similar, very formulaic as it's been the last few weeks. Lots of, um, I don't want to call them squash matches, but lots of WWE showcasing new talent from the Performance Center um, to help spread their main stars out. Mm -hmm. uh, to comply with, you know, social distancing and what Florida's doing and all of that great stuff. Um, I will say Raw has, since WrestleMania, actually since before WrestleMania, has very much relied on Andrade Cien Almas, um, Zelina Vega, Austin Theory and Angel Garza, and that does not disappoint. Um, I think 
theory still is kind of getting used to things. Um, he signed with WWE less than a year ago, and he's gone from being the Evolve champion to being in just starting his debut in NXT to all of a sudden he was in Raw and he was in uh, WrestleMania. So, like, he's had a giant rocket strapped right to him. Um, and that's mostly Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman loves him. Mm. Uh, but he still seems a little... He, he seems a little starstruck, I think, at this point. His matches are good. Uh, they're solid. He can work. Um, but I'm still kind of waiting for him to show maybe a little bit more character. And I think having him with Vega, Garza, who oozes charisma, and Almas, who does the exact same thing, kind of lets him, I don't want to say hide, but at least it, it, it gives him a buffer so he isn't relied on being the guy right now. Mm. Uh, and then, let's see, NXT, we kind of got our first inklings of Carrion uh, Cross, um, just more promos with him. Uh, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae had a nice little promo. That was fun. Um, I was disappointed in NXT this week because last week they promised me Balor versus the Velveteen Dream. Um, and I was all in on that. That was going to be a classic match. That, that That's a whole program that I need in my life. It, it is. It absolutely is. Um, but unfortunately, Finn Balor got mysteriously attacked. And nobody knew where he was going on. Uh, Shame so, when that happens, huh? Yeah. They um, they also had a resurgence of, I don't know how much attention you've been paying to NXT, but going back probably a month or two, they've had these two guys in Lucha Mass that just drive up in an SUV, beat up a wrestler, usually a luchador, throw him in the back of the van. Usually that luchador has just lost his match, and then they drive off. So it's almost like, it's almost like the Dark Order. It's kind of funny, mm. uh, especially if you look at what the Dark Order's been doing. So they've got Brody Lee, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson, right? Yeah. So Evil Uno is obviously one, Stu Grayson, two, and then the next ones down are now eight and nine, and then the new guy they brought in is number 10. So they have that gap. So it's almost like they're leaving room for WWE to kind of keep going with what they're going and have it be not uh, the exact gimmick, but a very similar kind of gimmick. So it's kind of it's kind of fun watching that. Um, so, so you think they're building a new stable there? Yeah, I think that's what they're doing is they're building a new stable and it's got something to do with these masked lucha with these, well, they're luchadors, right? But these big burly luchadors who kidnap people mm. and, and we don't know where those people go yet. And once they're kidnapped, we haven't seen them back. So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's one of those little sub thoughts that, you know, you keep your eye in cause, on because it's it could be something really good or it could be trash. You know, it's wrestling. Mm. Um, SmackDown was good. Um, the New Day picked up their eighth title last week, I want to say. Uh, their eighth title reign. Um yeah, and SmackDown was good. Uh, one of the things that's been going on, I think, with everything that is going on with how WWE has been running is when they're not doing a squash match, the matches are really good. Um, and they're showcasing a lot of new talent. Um, so I think that's interesting, too. Um, I don't think that's 
again, I don't think it's a bad thing to showcase new talent. I like them showing off new, younger talent, especially in the situation that they're in, not being able to use the same top-tier talent week after week after week. You've got these people that are in there with, um, you know, your top-tier stars, and they're getting that experience, and they're getting those reps. So I think it's a good thing overall. Um, but nothing really super exciting happened. Um, well, past them, actually, past them revealing who's going to be in Money in the Bank. And uh, I don't know, have, have, you, have any of you guys heard what they're doing for Money in the Bank yet? No. I have not. Right. No, not yet. So Money in the Bank is going to be interesting. The way I understood it was pitched was they're going for um uh, die hard in reverse so what they're going to be doing is they're going to be climbing the corporate ladder and it's going to be a pre-taped segment kind of along the lines of what they did with um the firefly funhouse and the uh the boneyard match so it's going to be a pre-taped segment taking place at wwe headquarters they have a ring with the ladders on top of the headquarters with the money in the bank suspended above that ring. So the whole idea is there's going to be 10 floors that they're going to have, and they've got to go up to each floor and climb the corporate ladder just to get to the actual ladder match. And then when they're at the ladder match, it's a standard ladder match from there. So I'm really interested to see where they go with it because Based off what they did with the Boneyard and the Firefly Funhouse, and I would say probably the Edge Orton Last Man Standing match, I'm they've they've done a really good job with them. So I'm really kind of interested to see where it's gonna go. I'm kind of excited for it. I would absolutely 110% love if Puppet McMahon made an appearance in Vince's office with like a puppet Triple H and a puppet Stephanie and like they had to sell themselves to Vince before getting to the ladder match that would be amazing um, but I'm, I'm just really excited to see what they're going to do yeah uh, I that that is fascinating um, I, I'm, de- I'm definitely checking that out um, as far as myself this week, uh, I only caught SmackDown and, um, uh, and you know, it's not bad. Um, I, I mainly caught it because of the whole Triple H segment they did, uh, this week for his 25th, uh, anniversary with the company. Did you hear it? They referenced it twice in that segment. I never thought I would hear that name on WWE TV ever again. I must have missed it. What was... KD Vic. Oh. Yeah. They brought up both Sean and McMahon brought up KD Vic. I honestly never thought I would hear that name spoken on WWE TV, let alone on Fox on SmackDown. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Um, I... You know, uh, one of the main reasons I checked it out is because everyone, like all the news outlets were covering Vince's uh, appearance on the show, talking about how he just, he seemed like a bumbling old man, Um, which, I mean, he is, but, um, um, and you know what, I thought it was Vince being actually himself and not the character of man vincent kennedy mcmahon um because if you've if you've ever heard any of the stories from any of the talent dealing with vince it's that vince has always been kind of all over the place and he's always been like that so i really think he was just being himself and not a character for tv um but yeah it was it was generally enjoyable uh, Dustin, how about yourself? Did you catch any AEW, any of the main product? Uh, no. Um, 
I didn't watch anything. I watched some highlights from SmackDown on YouTube, and uh, I watched some stuff about the fact that WWE might be nixing house shows, and that's kind of interesting. Mm. Yeah, that's been that's discussion's been around for well since everything started. Um, right. Obviously, they're canceling Money in the Bank, and uh, you know it's 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 a very interesting topic. Right. Just in general, because they don't they don't draw at house shows like they used to. They no. don't wear clothes. But it, and, I, I I saw someone saying something about if they tape the house shows because they tape them anyway. But if they put those house shows on the network, then it might get more people to come out to them, seeing if how they can follow some kind of storyline. Okay, but that's. The- Go ahead, like there, are, there, there's like Starcade, right? Starcade is a house show, right? And it's on the network, and they put it on the network every year, and it, it's like an hour or whatever it is. So they do have instances where they do put house shows on. Um, I don't know that they would put everyone on because, and, and the the only reason why I would say that is because. A lot of the times at house shows, they give you um, matches that are going to end up being a main event of a pay-per-view or something like that. Right. Uh, to test them out to see how the talent works. So uh, that's interesting. Exactly. Like, I, I, uh, I remember um, back in, um, oh God, I don't remember the year now. It was, it was the year that Stone Cold took on Scott Hall, the whole NWO invasion. Um, so that, that, that must have been 04, 05, maybe. Um, yeah, around there. Um, but I, I went to a house show because my dad's company at the time had hookups for floor tickets. Um, and, uh, and in that match, you essentially had the WrestleMania card. And everyone was practicing their spots and getting everything down. So when Mania hit, they they knew what to do. Um, yeah. And uh, and yeah, I mean stuff like that would be very difficult to do. And and not to mention, I think I think I'm not in favor for it is because uh, you get you get a different product in house shows. Like yeah, it's fun. It's it is. There's no like everybody's breaking kayfabe all the time. They don't gotta have to stay strict to character. They interact with the crowd a whole lot more. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm not into it too much. So, uh, Pete, yourself, what? Uh, what is your history with pro wrestling? Do have you ever watched any? Do you watch any? I haven't watched pro wrestling probably since '91 or '92. Uh-huh. Um, so like my brother thing. and I used to watch it all the time growing up and everything. I've been to probably 15 or 20 of the live events back in the 80s and early 90s. But uh, it ended up fading away pretty quickly right around then. So who were your favorites back in that time? Uh, I don't know, probably Andre the Giant, uh, Ricky Steamboat. Or probably the two. And did you ever get to see either of those guys live when you went to the oh, event? I, I was there when Hulk Hogan slammed Andre the Giant for the first time. So you, you were at WrestleMania 3? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the last live event I ever went to, actually. No, I think. That's awesome, man. <laughs> that's really Supposedly, awesome. that's like a big part of it. It is. I mean, it's, you know, that is a... Uh... When when you want to talk about Hogan career highlights that they throw on on some sort of role, that is that is it. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you also got to see the greatest intercontinental match of all time. Oh, oh yeah, um, uh, Macho Man and Steamboat. Yes, that's my that's one of my top ten favorite matches of all time. <laughs> that match is constantly brought up uh, when so when talking about greatest matches yeah and, um, it, was, it was so good 
I'm ashamed to say that I've never gone back and watched that specific match. Um, you should be because you have access to the network. I do. I I, I do, and I and I need to. I I need to do that. Um, Be the best twenty minutes of your life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's sad to hear. <laughs> it's Nate we're talking about, man. Ooh. That's true. Ooh. <laughs> oh, somebody else taking Nate instead of me. <laughs> Yikes. Yikes. Wait. So does this mean because they don't because. Pete doesn't know who Katie Vick is. Can I uncomfortably explain Katie Vick? Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can. Oh. All right. So, Pete, I'm sorry in advance. I've scarred you for life. During the Attitude Era, there was, which was the era that came around right after you got out of wrestling. Yeah. W- is that when, like, Hulk uh, Hogan turned back? <laughs> yeah. That's when Hulk Hogan went to WCW and turned bad and all of that. So in that era, there was uh, an ang- there was a, an angle, and I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was for the IC title at the time, where Kane, who was the brother of The Undertaker, was taking on Triple H. And I think he was part of DX at the time. So they... For, for some reason, Kane, who is this big monster character that doesn't really have a personality, he has wore a mask at the time, all of this, they, Triple H found out he had a girlfriend. That girlfriend's name was Katie Vick. And so he showed what was supposedly exclusive footage of Kane and Kate, at Katie Vick's funeral. So there's a dummy mannequin in a coffin in an actual funeral house. While there's a funeral going on next door, and here comes Triple H with Kane's mask on, because Kane used to wear a mask. He climbs into the coffin and proceeds to violate the corpse, the supposed corpse of Katie Vick. Uh, it is one of the most horrific segments I think that's ever been on wrestling at all, ever. Um, and in, it happened while there was a real funeral going on next door, and the people could actually hear Triple H making whatever noises he was making with the with the supposed body of, of Katie Vick. And it's just... It's, it's worth... A YouTube just like if you want something that is like is it going to make you uncomfortable for a while, it's it's worth looking it up on YouTube. And people wonder why I got out of wrestling. <laughs> no, Fair you know, no. Just... when you when you get the stories like that, no, nobody wonders why. We understand. Yeah, we we do, and and pray just pray to whatever you believe in, and and, and thank God that. Um, that we never got the angle that Vince wanted to do, which was an incest storyline between him and Stephanie. I mean, I think that would make anyone sane quit pro wrestling. <laughs> yeah, no, pro wrestling is not. It, it, it's better now. If you liked wrestling back in the 80s, I would imagine that probably... Um, WWE's quote unquote development brand NXT is probably more your speed as to what you want. It's rest and base, it's less drama, less weird stuff. Um, and they don't do storylines quite like Katie Vick anymore. Um, and there's a reason for it because now they're not trying to put anybody out of business, now they are. Well, they're not the only business in town, but they have contracts with networks and stuff like that, so they can't quite go down that road, thankfully. All right. All night, having a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, well, that you know what? You're the one who brought it up, so, so I serves am. you right. 
Yeah, but now you're all going to have nightmares with me, so it's... <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. So, um, normally we'd finish up with the wrestling segment, but uh, we're, like I said, we're making stellar time today. So, um, I, I, I wanted to go in a little bit, uh, Pete, yourself. Um, I uh, met you through all these Facebook groups, and yeah. you are a very well-respected member among by, by some <laughs> yes uh, but by the I, ones I, I say, care about yeah i would say uh more than not um, yes uh, we'll go with that yeah and um so give us some of your background in these groups uh which ones you admin how you kind of got hooked up with the whole thing well, Hall of Chigokin is the first one that I had, man. And I started that with a couple of other guys. Um, unfortunately, neither of those guys are uh, really part of the group very much anymore. Um, so I ended up taking on a couple other admins and uh, so forth to help with that group. Um, strictly uh, super robot related, um, Sola Chigokin, Bandai, and so forth. Um, that is the most laid back group. It's fantastic. None of the drama that you get in a lot of the Transformers groups and so forth. Yeah, I would, so that's really good. Um, I, I also do hardly agree there because I am also a member, and it's yeah, I've There's never no BS whatsoever with that group. It's been really great. Um, that's been around just a little over two years now. Um, I also uh, admin uh, Transformers only with Raymond, who you're very uh, familiar with, and mm -hmm. uh, Transformers Generations. Also, we do that group together. Also with uh, Dennis Boutwell. Um, all really good guys. Pretty much drama. Um, those two are generally more sales oriented than anything. It's not very social. Yeah. Um, Hall Chijukogin is actually a lot more, a lot more social, which is probably one of the reasons why it's, why it's one of my favorite groups. Yeah, I mean, I feel like a lot of these Transformers groups, as of late, have. I mean, while to be fair, most of them are were developed with sales in mind um it's still uh, you, you hit the nail on the head there's there's drama going on there that doesn't need to be um our our mutual friend chris lavador in uh in uh transformers liberated um we we get we get exclusive behind the curtain stuff that happens with him and a lot of it just you can't help laugh at <laughs> there's always something there's always something there's with the group anytime something. you're dealing with a group that has more than 2,000 people you end up getting all the drama and everything related to it but it's a matter of how the admins handle the drama and uh that's generally why I stick to my groups uh Transformers Liberated and maybe one or two others are the only ones that I really pay any attention to yeah yeah um also give us uh give us a little uh, history in your uh, your music background oh sheesh uh, I've been a bass player for close to 30 years now, going on about 30 years, I think. Um, I've played in all, all different styles of music, all different types of bands over the years. Um, I've uh, recorded a couple different albums over the years. Um, I've done recording work on other bands' albums, so I've done a lot of fill-in work, whether it's live or in the studio. Um, I really like doing that because it's a lot, a lot less stressful than you know running a band yourself and everything, so that's always really cool. Any um, names you'd like to drop? Uh, not really. Uh, okay. My current band is Addicted. Uh, that's yep. the cover band that I've been playing in now. So that's that's going to be the money maker out of all the all the projects I would say right now, um, which is, which is really just a laid back party band. Um, two of the guys that I play in the band with I've been playing with for close to twenty years. So uh, that that's an easy project. Really laid back, not a lot of pressure. Fun gigs. You know, when we play out, it's really just about having a good time and making sure that everybody in the crowd is having a good time. Yeah, I was uh, initially I was hoping to make it to that uh, that illicit um, show that you had. Oh, they'll uh, be in there. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that is definitely happening um, at some point. Um, so I guess, guys, I think we're going to have our first only uh, si single hour podcast here. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, 
I guess we'll wrap up here as I like to reiterate to everyone who is listening. Uh, right now, YouTube is our platform, which means we have to abide to the YouTube gods. So please give us a like if you like what you hear. Leave comments. Let us know what you hate, what we're doing well. Try to fix it up. And always, if you want to drop a subscription, please do. It's free. So, for the Beer, Toys, and Wrestling podcast, I am Nate Gleason with our special guest, Pete Kessel, uh, Mr. Lance Johnson, yeah. Dustin Hayward. Adios. All right, guys. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next week. <laughs>